Hello there. So, from what I've seen, this game is going to be interesting. Can't wait. It looks like um, the whole horror theme is going to start a couple of days early. More like half a month early, but yes. Um, I think I've heard of it. But it seemed like it would actually be a dating simulator type thing. I mean, I could be wrong, just saying it didn't really seem uh, like it would actually fit in with the other games that much. And they also seemed to redesign the main character a bunch. So, yeah. Yeah. Either way, from what I've seen, it didn't really look that interesting to me. And yes, my hair is somewhat fluffy today. It happens. Yeah. I felt like it. Today, my t-shirt is actually kind of fitting. You can't really see it, but up oh, there's a spider web type pattern out here, so. Because, I mean, why not? There aren't nearly enough shirts that have spider themes. So, yeah. Might as well celebrate the fact that this game seems a bit spookier with some spider webs. Uh, I don't wear a party hat all the time. <laughs> not sure if you noticed, but that was a matter of... Uh, well, it being my three-year anniversary stream, which was in August. <laughs> Apart from that sort of thing, I don't really wear party hats. I mean, I have... Well, something that's kind of a party hat. It's, well, a New Year celebration type hat. But it does not look like a traditional party hat. It's a black hat with a somewhat sparkly bow on it and feathers. <laughs> so, it's not quite an ordinary party hat. Hello, how you doing? And um, that party hat is currently being worn by a skull sitting up on the shelf. You can't see it that well, but it's like here, that skull in the mirror. So. Yes. There's a fairly, well, not so high quality microscope next to it. <laughs> it's basically a kid's toy. And yeah, that skull has the New Year's party hat. <laughs> so yes, I do have that party hat. Other than that, well, not really something I wear. And. This one's being worn by a skull, not by me. I do have a skull, but well, it's not up on that shelf. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Gonna start the game. Thank you. Yes, it is an owl. The pendant. Uh, oh joy. The frame rate. <laughs> That's rough. I mean, sure it's it's 3D, but but that that frame rate. Oof. All right, I have a zombie hand, I think, because it's green and has bones sticking out. <laughs> yeah, I finished Quest for Glory 3 yesterday, so yes. This one's pretty fancy so far. I like it. I like the whole style so far. Please insert your save character. Okay. There. Import. Your 
character has been successfully imported. Welcome to Shadows of Darkness. Okay. So. As a wizard, if it was incorrect, indicate your profession. Nope. Wizard. And only if it's incorrect. So. It is correct. I'm not sure if the whole having it ah no i did not become a paladin i don't know how do you do become a paladin i just know that was an option to choose to like convert to a paladin in the previous game so anyways i am a wizard okay so We've got 100 points available. That's nice. Okay, well, as I said, I think I could have converted the character to be a paladin. It seems a bunch of stuff got leveled up automatically. Because I don't think that these values are the same as I used to have. It's almost like stuff doesn't really matter. <laughs> well. I was... Uh, I'm hoping that at least didn't level me down. <laughs> so. Yeah, it kind of feels like this is just the standard wizard character, but... Sure, it's, it, it's imported. Yes. Anyways. Acrobatics? What? <laughs> I don't remember that. Okay, so... Uh, I'll level up magic to 300 because we're a great wizard. And weapon use to like... 230? Sure. Okay, well, I guess we'll see. I mean, I think at the end of the previous game you got possessed by a demon, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how he would end up in this area, because it seems like it's in a different part of the world, but I'm guessing we'll find out. Thanks for follow. So I guess I'll give him some more luck or vitality. Yeah, vitality. Okay. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll play it one day. We'll see. But I'm mainly focused on playing the original actual games, not so much the fan-made games. So... It just seems like a free game on Steam that's got a name that's, well, oddly, oddly reminiscent of Sierra games. Uh, Assuming that isn't an actual Sierra game, but a fan release. So, not saying that that's a bad thing, just it's not really what I'm focusing on. Hello, how you doing? You awaken from nightmares of flying and falling. You find yourself in this strange place. The only illumination, an eerie green glow. You've lost your weapons and the contents of your backpack somewhere during the journey. All you have are the clothes and armor on your back. This leaves you with four burning questions. Where are you? How did you get here? Who brought you here? And how in blazes can you get out of here? Good questions. No, make that five burning questions. 
What city did your luggage end up in this time? <laughs> I like the eyeball. It's fun. So, I do have money. <laughs> one crown. Okay. <laughs> Seems like they gave me one crown to have the pouch not be empty. <laughs> Alright. So, I'm guessing this is walking, look, use, slash pick up, talk. Uh, this is less uh, easy to actually understand than last time. I mean, yes, I still remember which one's which, but they should have worked a bit more on the contrast on that one, to be honest. And same on this one. It's kind of difficult to see what those symbols are, but maybe that's just me. I get the whole black and white aesthetic, but yeah, they didn't really care that much about contrast from what I can tell. So. <laughs> you stumble and fall over the ancient petrified corpse. As you pick yourself up, we discover a dagger and some coins on the dried out mm. dead body. It isn't going to use them anymore, so you take them. Interesting. Well, seems like it's time for my first save. They found items, so might as well. How much money did I find? Nice! I found quite a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll turn up the detail level. Let the skulls just look around. Wait, arcade? Text? Audio? What? Strategy? Arcade? I don't know what the difference between strategy and arcade would be. So text on and off. Auto save is on. But yeah. Seems fine. Once again, no proper volume settings. But, well. Obviously there won't be stuff like that. That would just be silly. Yeah, I don't know. I think in the previous game it meant something like the monster spawn rate, right? but I don't actually know for sure. And just side note, these games, in none of the games so far, so one through three, I did not have to look at the manual even once. Guessing this one is going to continue in that regard. Yeah, I do like the cursors in this one. So yeah, it seems like this game is actually going to be kind of Halloween themed. I appreciate it. Didn't quite expect that from this series. So, where am I going? I don't have a clue. Oh, is there copy protection in this one? Because there wasn't in the previous ones, though I could tell. <laughs> the altar feels strangely warm to your touch, but leaves a deeper chill somewhere within you. Oh, it's a bone altar. That's lovely. Brief search reveals a piece of hard grey rock which you take, and some coins, three crowns and thirteen kopecks. Interesting. You find thirty assorted copper and gold coins. I mean, at this rate, I'm gonna be rich just from looting a bunch of corpses. Do anything. 
That didn't do Wait. <laughs> the mouth has vampire teeth. Hmm. No one seems to be listening. No one seems to. <laughs> it's an interesting art style. <laughs> Still don't know where I'm supposed to be going, but that didn't. I'll have to figure it out eventually. I don't even know what this place is supposed to be, because I mean, is he in a bad dream or something, or hallucinating? Take the torch. Oh, nice. Can I use the torch? Didn't your mother? tell you not to play with matches. Well, the same rule applies to torches as well. well. I was trying to hold it instead of stuffing a torch in his pocket, which may or may not be lit while he's stuffing it in his pocket. So. Oh, Yeah, it might actually be a lit torch in his pocket. Seems rather dangerous. The valve won't budge. If you had a bit more, okay. maybe you'd be able to see how to open it. So, torch. That didn't do anything useful. Uh magic. That's a lot of light. Okay. Did he figure out how to open it? No. Okay. So, what do I have? Flint. You have a small grey piece of flint, much like the one described in your famous Adventurous Survival Chorus manual in the fire starting section. You vaguely remember something about using flint and steel together. I've got a dagger. The other way around, sure. Steel and flint. You scrape the flint with your dagger, creating a spark. Okay. Can I strike a spark with the flint and dagger to light the torch? Why is it green? Force the sphincter open with your dagger to pass through. You've made it into a large chamber. Stone valves, like the one you just passed through, apparently block three other passageways. There is a huge stone altar in the center of the room, and an exit to the south. Ah. Uh. I'm slightly suspicious about this place. <laughs> you pick up the canvas sheet and take three crowns and 17 kopecks from the pouch. He won't be needing them anytime soon. But yeah, is this place alive? Because it seems kind of... at least partially alive. That didn't do anything. The altar feels strangely warm to your touch, but leaves a deeper chill somewhere within you. Oh, another altar. Lovely. <laughs> oh, not just one. <laughs> Four of them in the same room. And also, weird goo hanging from the ceiling and a bunch of skulls like it seems like a mixture between a cave and a digestive tract so yeah i don't Flock know what to expect emerges from the cave entrance and they don't look friendly lovely 
Ah. As you might, the stone valve will not open. Perhaps this isn't the right time. Oh, God. Wait, how do I do stuff? What? What? I'm, I'm so very confused. How do I cast spells? What? What just happened? What? Oh, there! I cast a spell! Yay! The fire doesn't seem to work, though. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure about how this is supposed to work. Maybe I just don't know how arcade is supposed to work. Oh, there. That's... Okay, I just need to keep on pressing the button. Problem is that... Ah, oh, he's not aiming at them. <laughs> Which seems a bit embarrassing. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to have him jump and fight at the same time. And apparently that also just... Wait. It just looks like his mana bar is already empty. Yeah, this is a bit weird. What does that do? Incredibly confused. Yeah, uh... I'm not sure what they were thinking with this system. I mean, he's about to die from two bats. because he can't actually aim. <laughs> Is there a way to aim in this game? Because I don't see a way. <laughs> I don't think their health is going down at all. He's basically dead. Ah, it's fine though. There. Badly bruised, beaten, and battered by the batters who gruesomely give up the ghost. Well, that didn't go so well. You've made it into a large chamber. Stone valves, like the one you just passed through apparently block three other passageways. There is a huge stone altar in the center of the room and an exit to the south. That didn't do it. Yeah, I'm not sure how this is supposed to help. You pick up the canvas. This new combat system, because it seems a lot worse. <laughs> Just saying. Try as you might, the stone valve will not open. How about the other one? Try as you might. Okay. Maybe I need to try and defeat them from afar? Without going into the combat screen? Or I could just walk there and never ever see the bats, I guess. That works too. Okay. 
test the rope. You cautiously test the rope before crossing it. It feels as though it's firmly anchored on both ends of the chasm. Okay. Fly across? It would be nice work if you could get it, but you don't know a flying spell. Huh. The best you can do is to levitate, but that just takes you up and down, unless you can find a way to let the wind help you. I mean, I'd say technically if he could levitate just a tiny bit off the ground, he could pull himself across using the rope. But maybe that's too advanced for him. <laughs> a rope might be useful but it's firmly attached on both ends. You think about cutting it loose, but then decide that you may have to come back this way again. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where I can go at this point. Whoa, the ground is really slippery around here. There seems to be a layer of slime all over it. Interesting. All right, levitate then. Yeah, I can't actually interact with it while levitating. What did you just say? I think he said something. You could definitely feel the wind rushing past you as you floated in the air. But there wasn't quite enough push. You need to find a way to catch more of the wind to sail your way across. Okay. So, piece of cloth. It's a one yard square piece of canvas cloth. Seems good enough. That didn't do anything. That didn't do it. Oh, come on. That didn't do. Hmm. There. As you hold up the sheet like a sail can feel the wind pushing it and you towards the pit. Unfortunately, you're a little too heavy. You don't think the wind is powerful enough to push you across safely. What is that? You just barely made it across the pit. Okay. So... <laughs> This place might actually be partially alive. No jokes necessary. <laughs> Who is that? And did what? I slipped through the mouth of the cave, just in time to avoid being crushed by its closing jaws. <sighs> okay then. You are alive. Only one person has ever walked away from there before. Who are you? How did you get here? Oh, there are so many questions I want to ask you. But I have to get home quickly. It is so dangerous out at night in Mordavia. The town is due north of here. Be careful. There are many bad things wandering around. Not more bad yeah. things. Oh, by the way, my name is... I hope we meet again sometime. <laughs> Farewell. Well, hello, Katrina, and... Well... Interesting audio quality on your voice acting, Katrina. Okay, so... A six-pointed symbol seems to pulse with energy and comes loose in your hand when you touch it. You have the feeling that you may need this sign, so you carefully store it in your pack. Yeah, that... that's quite the sign. <laughs> Dark one sign. Okay. 
interesting. So, bronze symbol. Looks like a stylized. Oh, it's still this one. Yeah. Looks like a stylized octopus with only six tentacles. Well, that's mysterious. It was alright. Um, I'd say. Well, as usual with these games, it. It had some flaws that oh, could have definitely been improved upon. But yeah, it was quite good. I liked the plot. I liked the art style. But um, especially towards the end of the game, it was a bit uh, sudden. It felt like they just went yeah, well, that's enough of that game. Block off all the different villages and yeah, you, you don't need any more supplies. You're gonna be fine. And then just pushing you towards the exit. <laughs> so, yeah. The ending wasn't quite what I expected. And I'm back to leather armor. Leather armor provides you with some protection against enemy attacks. Helps keep you warm on these cool autumn evenings and generally makes a modern fashion statement. Don't know who considers it as modern, but yes, I do seem to have lost my chainmail armor. Slightly disappointed. Did I actually carry over my... Ah. Oh. No. No, it, it did not, in fact, carry over how much I leveled the spells. <laughs> yep. What is this? I mean, I guess maybe it tried to, uh, translate it to this game, but I'm pretty sure those weren't the exact numbers, do anything you so I'm not sure about the whole importing your character if it seems they're just getting the standard wizard character. That didn't do it. So it seems importing your character in this game doesn't really mean much. The path is dripping with slimy goo. You're having a hard time maintaining your footing on it. Okay, fine. I guess that makes sense. Which means that basically I could have just not bothered to import my character at all. It's just a tiny bit disappointing to well, save your character and try and import it and have it be the standard, but well, it didn't really look like they carried over, to be honest. The standing stone feels rock solid. I guess maybe I was just. You can't reach the. Wait. You can't reach the bonsai from here. Bonsai. It's too slippery for you to climb on it. Perhaps you can try something else. Who's keeping a bonsai in this place? Because <laughs> I mean, that's not a specific plant. That's like saying you can't reach the herb garden. Why would there be one here? <laughs> the standing stone feels rock solid. 
Oh, it's your bonsai. Okay. Yes. It, it's definitely something you'd find just out in the wilderness. A neatly kept bonsai. Yes. Uh huh. You can't reach the bonsai. I'm slightly confused about this. I mean, apart from the whole, uh, kind of being the wrong culture. <laughs> okay, can't do anything there. Wait, is this place just charred? Or do those rocks have their own- Oh! Nope, nope, it's a swamp. Okay. With zombies in it. Of course. Swamp zombies. The heavy odor of decay overwhelms your senses and makes you feel slightly nauseated as you survey this gloomy swamp. Yeah, I was starting to wonder why those rocks were pretty well lit compared to the surroundings. <laughs> they seemed out of place, but fine, I guess it's a swamp. Fine by me. Yeah, the arms are interesting. <laughs> He's sliding around. <laughs> I broke the game. It's been like half an hour and I've already broken it. And it actually crashed. <laughs> wow. This game, though. <laughs> That's quite incredible. <laughs> Crashing the game with like, within like half an hour of starting it. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, I am cursed. <laughs> I find all the bugs in these games, somehow. I mean, they should, like, pay me for playtesting their games that were released in the 90s. <sighs> or, I guess I could go for the automatic save. Yes. Okay. Yes, I know. <laughs> that 3D stuff, that's... Just incredibly uh, realistic looking and, well, has the frame rate of a toaster trying to run Skyrim. I, I think I found another bug. Maybe it's just me, but at least that one time when he came back to this area, the lighting was very much off. So he looked like he was standing in direct sunlight in the very shady swamp area. I, I might be nitpicking, but it just seems like such an obvious thing to try and get right. If you're gonna do, like, fancy lighting maybe have it not translate weirdly to the other screens. Anyways. It doesn't budge. Apparently not. The stream water is cold, crisp, and clear. It tastes refreshing. Good thing it's daytime somehow. Because 
The lady from earlier said it was night. Or at least evening. But it seems like it's... Well... Not even that early. <laughs> Maybe she was just confused about what time it is, because... This... Definitely does not look like night time. I mean, I guess it might be morning, but it's fairly late from what I can tell. Hello there. Could you? Okay then. This water is so cold, and I need someone to help warm me. How about no? Yeah, not suspicious at all. Is she still going to be here? She just going to reappear? Yes, she is. Dang it. Hello. <sighs> well, time to drown. It is so cold here in the lake. Please, come and hold me and help me to be warm again. You wade out to the lake woman and take her in your arms. Her skin is soft but very cold. She might also be a zombie. The lake spirit moans softly as she holds you closer and closer and tighter and tighter, then pulls you down into the lake. How very unexpected. You quickly discover that you really don't know how to breathe underwater. And, well, puns going drown. It is so cold. So. Lily pads float serenely on the surface of the lake. Flowers grow in colorful profusion along the lake shore. It is so cold here. In yeah, shush! I already heard it the first five times you said it. So very cold, you need to drown someone to warm up which makes perfect sense you better get some food soon i see a bird <laughs> i mean i'm not that good at aiming but who knows Maybe I could use, like, I don't know, a force bolt and a fire dart to first get the bird and then barbecue it. Who knows? A hungry hunting hawk alertly searches for signs of game not already claimed by the forest monsters. No one seems fine. I mean, it's pretty. I'll give it that. Is he waiting for me to die? Wait, how am I supposed to cross? Looks like there might be a bridge back there, but... Meh, fine. The 
takes a sub. Um, did it play the sound twice, or is that just me? Because it, I think I heard it twice. If that's the case, I'll try and figure out why that's happening. Because I honestly don't know. Okay, fine. I guess it's just on my end then. It's alright. Don't know why that would happen, but... Well... No. <laughs> I'm not. Alright. Well, I'm glad it's working correctly on stream. So... It's fine by me. I don't have a problem with hearing the sounds weirdly echoed. <laughs> I was just worried it might, You've never well, been not just be me. Pumpkin pie. That's not the only thing you can make with a pumpkin. Okay. Be interesting if I'm just gonna bite him. Because <laughs> I mean, the whole vampire teeth thing going on, <laughs> using that icon on a person kind of implies, well, biting them. Nice to meet, does. I, I, I am Nikolai. Have you seen my honor? No. Honor? Have you seen my honor? Still no. I am looking for honor. Have you seen honor? Uh, how old is she? Is it a child? Is it a dog? Thanks for the sub. I mean, it might be anyone. It might be his wife. It might be his goldfish. I don't know what he's looking for. If you enter the northern part of the town, you hear the sound of a chisel chipping away at a stone block. A man is carving gravestones at one end of the street. Your attention quickly moves from the stone carver to the ominous gothic building in the center of the street. There is definitely something not right about this structure. That seems perfectly fine to me. I mean, I guess the game might be referencing the the core choices. I mean, I'm guessing this might be like a wasp or something, or a dragonfly. They've got some beetles going on. Maybe some, well, centipedes or something? Oh, and the weird stylized octopus type situation. Okay. Well, he looks healthy. <laughs> Igor, just... Igor. Building was Adventurers Guild. Uh, no adventurers, no guild. That makes sense. Town Mordavia, this north part of town. Oh, this day job. Also work graveyard shift. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. Okay. <laughs> Igor dig graves in cemetery. Igor put dead person in grave. Igor cover dead person with dirt. Igor put headstone on grave. Oh, plenty job security around here. Business is piling up. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. Again. Interesting. Well, I mean, at least he has the order down, so... Seems good. Oh, 
Igor, Igor not hear rumors. Igor not no stranger in town. Igor not no doctor make strange things in lab. Igor not no funny man in inn not funny. Igor not no many things. Igor not hear many things. Okay, so he's a grave digger. Who doesn't hear lots of different, very specific things? Oh, Igor not hear rumors. Igor not no stranger in town. Igor not no doctor make strange things in lab. Igor not no funny man in inn not funny. Igor not no many things. Igor not hear many things. Yes. Uh, bad building. No go there. Bad, bad, bad. All right. Good talk. Open door. The door is locked. No. Listen. It's completely silent beyond the door. So, what if I cast... It's too dangerous no. to use magic in town during the day. The townspeople are very suspicious of magic users. I'm gonna hide the fact that I'm a mage again. They're no fun. It is my job to know everyone and everything that goes on here. Okay. Interesting. My name is Dmitry Ivanov. I am the burgomaster of this town. Is that actual... Word? Because to me it just makes me think of the German word. So. Mordavia is a well is surrounded by mountains. There used to be a road which led from here, but heavy rains have created a swamp at the base of the mountain south of here. No wagons can get you in or out, nor can any person, except perhaps you. Wait, what? Mordavia is a well is surrounded by mountains. There used to be a road which led from here, but heavy rains have created a swamp at the base of the mountains. So how did I get here? No wagons can get you in or out, nor can any person, except perhaps you. That's weird. Okay. Interesting. Did know that did not know that that was a word. Very much feels like it's a derivative of the German word, but well. This is the town of Mordavia. There is an inn and a shop down the street where you can spend the night or get some supplies and be on your way. The sooner you leave, the better for all. Of course. There are many dangers in Mordavia, and we certainly do not need a stranger to stir up new troubles. Oh. All right. That makes sense. The Hotel Mordavia has rooms and food. It is safe place to spend the night. I don't mean... Uh, German and Dutch are related in ways, so... Makes sense that I recognize which word it's, well, coming from. Uh, this shop does not carry much. We have been cut off from supplies for a while now. Makes sense. Still, you may at least restock your food rations before you continue with your travels. Well, 
How generous I may go there and buy food. <laughs> there are many strange and dangerous creatures that live in Mordavia. Trust nothing. The gates of this town are closed at sunset. Do not let yourself get caught outside after dark. For few uh -oh. can survive a Mordavian night or remain sane enough to speak of it. Well, I... I am going to need to check that for myself. Just leave Mordavia quickly. No good comes from outsiders and we do not want you here. The sign reads, General Store. You wonder how much of a commission the salespeople get. <laughs> From the sign reading Burgermeister's office, you cleverly deduce that the Burgermeister works here. It's been years since you studied Mordavian, but you think that Burgermeister might be the word for mayor, or perhaps sheriff. Perhaps. The sign simply reads, In. I guess that means you should go in. And as far as I'm aware, it's more mayor than sheriff. I mean, I'm not incredibly familiar with the whole sheriff system, but from what I know, it's very much not a sheriff. So. Entered a small but nicely furnished country inn. Stairs lead up to the guest bedrooms. The floor is covered with sawdust and peanut shell. A barrel contains the few shells that managed to land in it. The innkeeper stares at you with an expression of fear and astonishment. It is several seconds before he speaks. This is the Hotel Mordavia. Rooms Why would they have a hotel? Kopecks for room and board. Pay for one week in advance. Your room will be the first room at the top of the stairs. Uh, we want food in the morning or evening. Just sit down over there by the door. Pay the innkeeper for your room and board. Thank you for your payment. Wait, which type of coin was that? I think it was the... Yeah. So it's the smaller coin out of the two in this game. That's pretty cheap for a week. At least it seems fairly affordable. Three of the townsmen huddle together. They keep looking in your direction as they talk. You suspect that they are saying something not particularly complimentary about you. Well, time to talk to them then. <laughs> I am Hans. Pleasure's all yours. I'm a farmer of pumpkins and corn and a person of great importance here in lovely Mordavia. Listen, I'm telling you, Igor's death must be avenged. What? <laughs> Pleased to meet you. I'm what? Ivan, an elephant herder. Unfortunately, there are no more elephants in Mordavia, so business has kind of fallen off a tad. <laughs> what? I did not expect. Like, what? <laughs> Is it gonna happen again? I am Han. Listen, I'm telling you, Igor's death must be avenged. <laughs> what? <laughs> Igor is dead? You, I'm Ivan, an elephant herder. Unfortunately, <laughs> there are no more elephants in Mordavia, so <laughs> business is kind of falling off. Yes, I. Head. I get it's a bug. <laughs> I'm just. Impressed how buggy this game is. I mean, I started streaming an hour ago. And I haven't been playing the game for that entire hour, so... The game's spoiling itself. Right? Guys, is it just me or is Mordavia a wonderful place? Oh, are you kidding? It's the greatest. There's many places to go, things to see. Are you kidding? What? Right. 
Let's not forget that scenic cemetery to the east of town. Everyone here is nothing but grins. Real friendly. Yeah, except that we don't know you. We don't like strangers. <laughs> or anyone else that's weird. I'm confused about the voices. Because, I mean, was the previous voice of Eager's Death Needs to Be Avenged his voice? Or was that just now his voice? <laughs> I think these guys might actually be possessed. Who knows? Rumors. You talking to me? What rumors? Huh. There are no rumors here. Unless you count the rumor that the castle is owned by... Horse Patootie. There are no rumors in Mordavia to speak of. And they definitely took some liberties with the reading of the dialogue. The town of Mordavia is a quiet place. Filled with friendly. Joyful, stinky people! Well, I'm not so sure about the friendly part. We tend to be very suspicious of strangers like you. Yeah, well, anyway, the town is filled with joyful and stinky people. <laughs> yeah, happy, joyful, and stinky people. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call us particularly joyful. As a matter of fact, most of us are pretty glum. Oh, very well, all right, then Mordavia is filled with people, you know, stinky ones. Yeah, many stinky people. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it many. There actually aren't very many of us around here. Oh, forget it. Well, at least he stinks. <laughs> it seems the voice actor has had quite the field day deciding, uh how to change the actual dialogue of the game. Like, adding the whole stinky. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this game just yet. I am Hans. Listen, I'm telling you, Igor's death must be- Pleased to meet you, I'm Ivan, an elephant herder. Unfortunately, there are no more- Yeah, I, th I think the ears death, death needs to be avenged might be Ivan's line. So, yeah. Possible. I don't have a clue. I'm just noticing that it's rather different. <laughs> yeah, I know! Eager's not dead. Poor Eager. They're talking about his death even though he's perfectly fine. That's a lot this of cats. This general store is cheery and well lit. Thanks to the warm hearth. The first things that you notice are the cats. They seem to be everywhere. Then you see the shopkeeper sitting on her rocking chair as she knits. She's a very... Well, uh, sturdy looking woman. So, you're the stranger in town. <laughs> I've heard all about you already. Interesting design for her. The cozy cat conveys a calmness most common in comfortable confines. This is a store counter. It's covered with more cats than merchandise. Well, I see one cat. <laughs> the cozy cat conveys a calmness most common in comfortable confines. The cozy... Please, don't handle the merchandise. If you need something, I will be happy to help you with it. I think the knitting needles are moving on their own while she's talking. If you must know, my name is Olga Storich. What's your name, stranger? And uh, what are you doing in Mordavia? 
to tell her a few things about yourself. Oh, a professional hero, huh? <laughs> Easy to say, hard to do. We'll see. But yeah, I'm slightly concerned about those knitting needles. <laughs> her hands aren't moving, but the knitting needles are. Um, let me see, what could you use? Well, besides my regular items like brooms and pens, I uh, really don't have anything else for adventurers like yourself. Now, I do have some lovely sandwiches you can use for rations. And gun, of course you need gun. <laughs> I've also got some oil you can use to keep the weapons and armor from rusting. And if you like sweets, I've got some yummy homemade candy. Although the garlic flavored ones have all been purchased by now. <laughs> I'll have to uh, make some more. Uh, oh, and the shopping bag to carry things in. I have a couple of those left. Did the voice actress change between lines? Because I think when I asked her for her name, that was at least a very different sounding voice. So, I don't know what changed between those. It's a bit weird. Three twists of candy will cost you just five kopecks. <laughs> the kids love him. Oh, now garlic is a must-have item. It's just 25 kopecks for a bulb, and it will add flavor to any food. The storekeeper looks around nervously for a moment, then continues. You know, some say garlic also has medicinal and protective properties. Interesting. My husband always said I make the most interesting <laughs> Interesting. They're very good for you, and I only charge 50 kopecks each for them. <laughs> yes, I want some interesting sandwiches. Sure. The shopping bag costs 50 kopecks. It is very useful for carrying your purchases or uh, other large things. A flask of household oil will cost you 100 kopecks. It's good for door streaks and can also be used to loosen up rusty wagon wheels. Uh, I'm not saying the voice acting itself is bad, I'm saying, uh... Well, I think her name was Katrina? Or Katarina, or whatever. There are so many iterations of that name. It was one of those. Anyways, uh, her microphone sounded kind of weird, so it just sounded kind of staticky. And uh, the whole thing in the end <laughs> that didn't quite work out with, oh, by the way, character who I saw alive is apparently dead. Uh, and we need to avenge his death, and also the wrong character is saying that line at the completely wrong time in the story. Not saying the voice acting itself is bad, just, well, how they implemented it might not have been the best way. I can sell you a very nice large pie pen for 250 kopecks. <laughs> I've always admired a man who can cook. I'm... As I said, I'm not saying that the actors are doing a bad job. I mean, they're not sticking to what's on screen, so they're... I don't know if they got handed that script. I have no clue. But I'd say, apart from that, they're doing a decent job. It's more up to the developers to make it all fit together. <laughs> You can purchase the hand broom for 350 kopecks. I'm sure you'll really clean up with it. You can purchase the hand broom for That's quite expensive. Kopecks. I'm sure you'll really clean up with it. Why is it that expensive? What would you like to know about? Yeah, Bella's a Good woman. She's the one who really runs the inn. Her husband just gives orders. 
Someday she'll give Yuri a piece of her mind and good for her. <laughs> the thing she puts up with. Bella. She was a pretty woman not long ago. Was not called Bella for nothing. Losing her only child to real age. <laughs> what a tragedy. The castle north of town was abandoned for many years. Then, some strangers moved in four years ago. No one knows what goes on there now. But it won't be for the good, I'll tell you. Uh, the voices right now, it's a, are fine, but the first one just... It seemed extra grainy. So this game is going to have weird uh, tentacle monsters, because of course, it's gonna have vampires, it's gonna have werewolves, <laughs> what else, and well the mermaid spirit creature. Okay then, so she meant that literally. As in that group is also werewolves. Okay. <laughs> that is a bad place, and you'd better have nothing to do with it. It is dangerous and should have been thrown down long ago. Many strangers never came back after asking questions about it. So don't your curiosity be the death of you. Hmm. So, are those the vampires? and should have been thrown down long ago. Many a stranger never came back after asking questions about it. So don't let your curiosity be the death of you. I think that might be the building with all the oh Insects carved on the front side. Yeah, my husband and myself have run this shop for many, many years. My husband uh, passed on now, but I keep it just the way he liked it. A well-run shop is a busy shop, he always used to say. Not very busy anymore, what with the swamp. But I try to keep it going the best I can. Mostly housewares, but a few items that uh, might interest you. Fine. So. Um, um. I think I might actually buy some rations. So. Rations. Fine. Yes. First, select the there. item you wish to purchase. Wait, so I'm guessing it worked. Yes. So I have been buying several of those. I'm guessing I want some garlic. Since it's a vampire game. And I'll leave the rest for now. I mean, fine, I'll get a shopping bag. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to that part. Where's the door? Oh, over here. Goodbye. Or, as my dear departed Boris used to say, may the winds blow fair at your back. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Maybe next time. Not sure about garlic candy. Are you just sightseeing? Yes. Or casing my place. Just sightseeing. Looks like a dungeon. To be honest, I do not trust you. What you say of yourself is unbelievable. And what you do around here seems likely to get you in trouble. If the pass was clear, I would ask you to leave Mordavia. As things are, I will be watching you closely. <sighs> okay. The old adventurer's guild is at the north end of town. It has been abandoned for many years, since we have not had many adventurers who could cross the swamp. Well. Seeing as you are supposed to be an adventurer, here, have a key to the guild door. <laughs> Perhaps you can find something of use there. I mean, <laughs> not sure how much use it's going to be unless I can stay there. To the northwest of town is Castle Borgov. It used to be owned by the Borgov boyars of Mordavia, but the last Borgov died years back, and no one came to take his place. Some strangers moved in some years back, but they have had nothing to do with the town, and we have had nothing to do with them. The old road from town used to meet with the road from the castle and head south to the pass. The heavy rains not only created this swamp, but caused so much plant growth you can't see the road anymore. The swamp is a dangerous and foul place. They say that all who ever were buried beneath the earth there now reach up to drag the living to their deaths. I have seen for myself that this is true. Stay far from the swamp if you value your safety. There are other things in Mordavia to see and do, but I am not a tour guide here. Go up and see for yourself, but be careful. The gates of the town are locked at night, so be sure to return before it gets dark. It's dangerous to be out after sunset. Okay. Well, he's a bit of a ventriloquist, as some characters in Sierra games tend to be, as in no mouth movements for at least the first line, I think it was. Um, not sure what you mean about the swamp. And yeah, I, I do hope so. Everyone in Mordavia minds his own business and does not go looking for trouble. Everyone. They obviously do not fit in well here. <laughs> well, too bad. He has a jail cell? That's a weird mayor. The cell door is locked. I don't remember mayors having jail cells. They are supposedly elected officials who like, run the town. Other people's business, and you and I will get along with one another. Otherwise, you will get me angry. I'm sure you don't want to make me angry. T true that didn't do and uh, I think the windows are barred at the top too the Burgermeister keeps his windows yep. securely barred <sighs> he seems a bit weird beautiful out of season flowers grow all around the stone monument The curved staff has a very organic look to it. Its curves seem somehow feminine. You can feel a sense of magical power radiating all around it. Okay. Can I get it? You were told that you shouldn't use magic in Mordavia. Someone might see you here. Fine. Can I 
get it this way. The staff feels warm and almost alive in your head. You hear an eerie voice in your head. This I must first do. The sacrifice of life for one of love. You find yourself letting go of the staff very quickly. Oh yes, so it's somehow a female staff. Glad that that has been established. The sign reads, Dr. Cranium. You wonder what sort of medicine he practices. So I'm guessing that's the doctor who is doing weird experiments. Ah, uh, knock. No one responds to your knock. The occupants are either absent or asleep. Okay. Wait, what? Dr. Cranium has a self-answering doorbell. It's a memory test. Ring the bells in the same order you see them ring. Okay. Fine. I guess that's a thing now. There. This strange device is labeled Transcendental Receiving Animal Processor. What? Hmm. I wonder if that stands for something. Be careful, this might be a trap. Oh, wow. Well. Knock. How interesting. It sounded as though someone knocked on the other side of the door as well, several times. Okay. There is no response to your knock. There is no. You don't hear anything behind this door. You hear something bouncing around behind the door. A lot of some things. Okay then. That's a good sign. I'm sure. You faintly hear a voice saying, Don't knock! Come on in! From beyond the door. You hear mysterious bubbling and sizzling noises. Every once in a while you think you hear someone muttering to himself. Well, I'm sure that guy is not going to murder me, but did the statue just move? Yes, it did. Okay. I guess this is gonna be a thing. Uh. We've got a joint puzzle! <laughs> yes. It's been a while since I've done one of these and... Well. Not entirely sure how this is supposed to look, so... Might take me a while. Okay. I'll just assume this is gonna be somewhere in the middle. Ish. There. Can I switch them like that? Yes, I can. Interesting. Hmm. 
so I can just switch them around any way I want. Okay. That looks somewhat fitting. But I don't think that's quite it. I don't know. So, this one goes there. That one goes here. What else? That goes here. That goes there. Not sure about this one. Hmm. Or actually there. No. Oh, supposed to move these up some more, probably. There, there, there. That's more like it. Still don't know about this piece. Stuff isn't quite lining up properly yet. So, this one there? Yes. That makes more sense. Anything else? I think this one doesn't fit yet. There. Yep, got it. So now what? You need to find the key that fits this door. Fine. You've uncovered a keyhole, but you don't have the proper key to open this door. Okay, so I have to do that again next time I want to try and unlock that door. Right? <laughs> At least now I know what it's supposed to look like. It was a nice puzzle though. Using the key the Burgermeister gave you. <laughs> Apparently you unlock the door while standing ages away from the mic. Any more weight might strain your muscles. <laughs> Try working with the weights you already have in the basket. Baskets? I think those are buckets, but I could be wrong. You read in the Adventurer's Log about some of the exploits of past adventurers in Mordavia. Prominent among them is the story of Pyotar and the Dark One's cult. Near the end of the book, Fyotr tells how he led the armies against the Chernovi cult outside the Dark One's cave. The fighters were trained soldiers, but the cult members fought like madmen. Suddenly, the cult members changed their forms and became grotesque monsters. Many of the soldiers panicked and ran, 
The battle was nearly lost. Then Fyota heard the voice of Inanna. By all my will, I banish you too. The voice was cut off. The cult members screamed and ran. Piotr entered the cave and searched for some sign of life. All he could find were the grotesque remains of cult members. The only sign of Irana was her magical staff lying on the ground. Piotr picked it up and left the cave, knowing that Irana was beyond his help. Piotr then tells how he brought the staff back to town and placed it in the town square. A garden of flowers instantly sprang up around it. Near the end of the book, Piotr tells that he was going to seek out the rituals of the Dark One and destroy them. There are no later entries. So I guess he died. That would be a lot easier if the desk had a draw. Great. Thanks, Sierra. You sign your name into the adventurer's logbook with a flourish. It's almost become a habit by now. Almost. You read in the adventurer's log about some of the exploit. Near the okay, so that's the only yeah. thing in the logbook. Which book do you want to read? As you scan through Hero, the Journal of General Job Adjusting find quite a bit of information that might be useful here. There are a series of articles about the land of Mordavia. The town originally grew up around Castle Borgov. The Borgovs were the boyars, or local noblemen, assigned the role of guarding the area from invaders. The chapter on fauna describes a number of interesting creatures. The Necrotor is a vicious carnivore with big, sharp teeth. Some of the other monsters sound even more horrific. In the forest lives the Lishi, a creature known for playing practical jokes on travelers and playing riddle games, but which can also be helpful to those it likes. Interesting. Learn about the Rosalka, the spirit of a murdered unmarried woman. Such spirits are said to inhabit lakes and rivers. They try to avenge themselves by drowning any man foolish enough to approach them. You could really learn a lot by reading this magazine thoroughly instead of just browsing through it. Isn't it nice that we included a complete copy in your game box? <sighs> Thanks, Sierra. <laughs> but also, yes, the spirit of an unmarried woman. <laughs> the book turns out to be an advertising brochure. It says, I, Dr. Cranium predict that someday one of my descendants will become the subject of a major computer game. The Castle of Dr. Brain from Sierra Online. Jeez, jeez. Great. <laughs> well. The book is all about using spells in unusual and creative ways, such as calming a fire, using alternate flame and frost spells to make something brittle and break, and so on. Pick up a number of useful tips which will improve your spell casting. This book teaches the ancient oriental art of talk fool. How to overcome opponents by attacking them with the unpronounceable names of martial arts forms and confusing them with fortune cookie wisdom. You get lost somewhere between karate and kuksur. Okay. <laughs> Take a book. Hey, this isn't a lending library. He's the only one who has access to this room. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing that was the only set of keys. Nice try. But the bookshelf won't budge. If there's a secret passage around here, it's hidden a different way. Fine. The frame is concealing a secret passage, but you can't see any way to open it from here. Okay. Interesting. 
just cast this open. This is not a good place to practice your magic. I'm... Your legs are too stiff and sore to use <laughs> right now. Okay, then. <laughs> Hope I at least... Well, gain something. <laughs> Not sure. I guess he might have gained some strength. Are you kidding? <laughs> Probably bite your fingers off, then suck the blood out of them. You'd better moose out of this one. Apparently that's what a moose does. <laughs> For some reason I missed that in biology class. The case is totally sealed. You can't find any way to open it. The case looks totally solid, as if it was constructed around the sword. A plaque reads, Break glass in emergency only. <laughs> you straighten out your jacket and retie your boots. Appearances count. His boots weren't tied. The painting doesn't look particularly valuable, and there's nothing behind it. So I'm not sure if they were serious about there being the a secret are... passage. It is said that a man's reach should exceed his grasp. That's certainly true of what you're trying. Guessing I still can't use magic here. Fine. You didn't manage to fetch anything. Fine. How? Oh. A feeling of peace and tranquility fills the area. Didn't really mean to use that one, but it's fine. Open again? This is not a... This is... Fine. So, can I fetch this? You didn't manage to fetch it? Nope. This is a bas relief of a strange creature. It looks like an octopus with only six tentacles. You have a creepy feeling as if it is looking right back at you. It probably is. It is a thoroughly uninteresting wall. Sort of a wallflower. It is a. Th I'd say it's interesting, but. Maybe I'm just weird. So, time to meet the neighbors. Bad place. <laughs> very bad place. Go away. You'll be very sorry. I've got to save. I'll be fine. So, open. <sighs> Nobody ever listened to Igor. That Hectopus has had the munchies ever since it got stoned. Fortunately for it, but not for you, it occasionally gets its meals delivered right to the door.
Well. You approach the hectopus to touch it. You approach the... Okay. Well, I approach it, but I don't seem to be getting very far. Oh well. Don't know how not to get eaten by, well, that stone creature. Hectopus, whatever. Can I walk? Maybe someday? No? Walking off screen sometimes seems a bit glitchy. Not sure if that specifically area was a place I could have walked, but it's not just here. It was more of a general statement. I'm guessing he's still looking for Anna. Well, I... I keep looking for Anna. Will you help me find her? She's missing. Anna has been gone for a long time. I have been looking for her for... for so... so very long. I... I do not know what has become of my Anna. I don't think you'll find her. Just saying. So, I'm guessing... It seems, um... I might have missed some chat, possibly. So. Just in case anyone said anything in the last couple of minutes and I didn't reply, that would be why. My chat disconnected. The stream seems stable otherwise though, so. I don't know what caused it. Yes, it did. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I don't appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Twitch said the exact same thing in chat. <laughs> what a coincidence. The other guys left. Mm, this inn used to do a steady business before this swamp prevented traders and tourists Thanks from coming. Now we mostly make our money off of food and drink. The castle was once that of the boyar. Now we do not know who lives there. Besides the ones that come in here in the evening, there are quite a few others. You probably have met the shopkeeper, the gravedigger, and the burgomeister. And then there's Nikolai and that crazy Dr. Cranium. Ah, he is a harmless old man who wanders around dead wife. looking for his yeah. dead wife. It must be a shame to grow old all alone. <laughs> Dr. Cranium came to Mordavia several years before the swamp closed off the pass. No one knows much about him, but no one trusts him. It's rumored that he conducts strange experiments. Can't imagine why. The shopkeeper knows everything that goes on in town. 
She also makes a delicious avocado and garlic sandwich, which she sells as rations. Not sure how they'd have avocado here. I don't think this area would grow them, but... The Burgomeister keeps to himself and lives in his office. Well, I like garlic. The gravedigger is a strange one, though he is a good carver of tombstones and digger of graves. I know little of the forest, for I seldom leave my inn. You should speak with the Burgomeister. Perhaps he can tell you more about it. I am there, as always. I do not gossip. It's alright so far. Trying to figure out the game. I think they're... Or decorating with garlic. Nobody answers your knock. As you start to open the door, you realize that this is the innkeeper's room. You quickly close it again <laughs> before you get caught. He doesn't mind. <laughs> no reaction to the fact I just knocked on his door. host building was adventurers guild uh, no adventurers no guild oh this day job also Igor not hear rumors. Igor not know I don't know town. who the funny man at the end is supposed to be. But it seems that dialogue has not changed yet. I figured I'd check. Because, I mean, sometimes it's just a matter of talking to people again after learning new stuff. So yeah, just trying to figure out what I can. Back again so soon. What have you heard lately? <laughs> she wants to hear all the gossip. And, uh, my sad departed husband. His name was Boris. Gone three years now. He was such a good man. Aww. Would you like to know about? He's a strange one, isn't he? Digging graves and carving tombstones during the day, helping that crazy Dr. Kenyon at night. You know, he's not up to any good. And these new folk have nothing to do with him. Interesting. named Dimitri. He is responsible for keeping order in the town, and he is very serious. But there was some scandal about his grandmother, but it was hushed up. Dr. Cranium is a very strange man. No one knows what goes on in the back room of his house, except maybe Igor, and he won't talk about it. Some well. the Doctor will blow us all up with one of those experiments of his. You mark my words. I mean, if he does, then you won't be here to tell everyone you told them so. You see, there 
used to be a very active adventurer's guild here in town. But it's been empty and locked up since I can remember. This isn't such a bad place to settle down, you know. You could easily earn a living farming here. That certainly has more job security than adventuring, after all. She's roasting me. As my husband used to say, come back again, sunshine or rain. Seems like he had lots of phrases. Because I'm pretty sure that wasn't the same one as last time. You'd probably stay on better terms with the Burgermeister if you entered his office through the door <laughs> from the window. <laughs> well, good point, yes. Do that. Were you looking for something in particular? Just a conversation. Why are you always so curious about things? Don't you understand? Most things are none of your business. Never find someone who asks as many questions as you do. <laughs> well, nice to meet you too. The problem with adventurers' guilds is that they attract adventurers. Adventurers tend to stir up trouble. I hope you will not cause trouble. Well, that's not menacing at all. More sightseeing? Well, there was a lovely lake to the southwest of town that used to be very popular among young people, but I do not know what it's like now. To the east is the town cemetery. It is a morbid thing to visit, but tourists always wanted to see it when tourists were able to come here. To the southeast is Irana's garden. It is an enchanted meadow well worth visiting. However, I mean, yeah. Mordavia nice. has become a very dangerous place since the swamps were formed. Do not ever travel at night. If you are far from town when it gets dark, try to make it to Irana's garden. It's the only place where you will be safe. I do not really want anything to happen to you. Be careful. Irana was a powerful magic user, who was rumored to have come from somewhere near Mordavia. Her garden is supposed to be magical, and keep anyone who stays there safe from harm. Irana died here many years ago. Her staff in the center of town stands as her memorial. It is supposed to protect the town from evil, and to have other magic besides. It is bad luck to speak of her death. If you must know, she died in that cave you say you came from. I'm not a superstitious man, but I will not talk more about the subject. He's not superstitious, but... It, well, he is, but... Not that superstitious. I have been hearing all this guy. sorts of stories about you lately. No one is certain what to make of you. to avoid getting into trouble. I would not like to have you in my jail, after all. <sighs> I'm not a thief. I'm a mage. Just not allowed to do magic in here. Because Sierra doesn't like it when I do magic. So... How do I get out of this town? Was it this way? Yes.
Yeah. It does seem like it. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a very fitting game for fall. So I guess I can't go over here. Nope. Or up there. So the only way to go anywhere from here is crossing the river. Seems you might actually recover stamina in this game. Or whatever the middle part is. Yeah, it does seem to be stamina. So. That makes sense. I'm not sure I need to map it. You pick a few of the flowers. Yay, I've got flowers. Nothing better than a bunch of, uh, wilting flowers. Yeah, so far it doesn't seem like I'll have to map it. It doesn't burn. Oh, we'll see. Grey rocks litter the ground everywhere, reminders of glaciers long since past. Yeah, so far I'm just exploring. It doesn't look like it would be very easy to map. So, I prefer not to have to. And it doesn't look too bad, so, yeah. I mean, yes, it is going to take me a while to figure out where I'm going and how to get there. But, well. Don't. If my maps are great, then... I'd say that, oh, doesn't really, it, it's kind of an insult to other people's maps if you're calling my maps great. Combat music? Wait, is, is that a bunny? Okay, okay. Absolutely nothing in the little rabbit's fanny pack. Well, maybe a pocket watch, but you don't need one of those. Oh. Interesting. So I killed the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. And it had a bunch of blood around its mouth. Which doesn't seem sinister at all. Yeah, he's definitely going to be late.
Yeah, I'm sure this place is going to make sense eventually. Ah, there's the swamp. Lovely. Still the swamp. So yeah, I just need to learn where stuff is. I think I'm heading towards the village. So, should hopefully reach it eventually. We'll find out. But yeah, maybe I'll need a map. We'll see. What's that pile of stuff? Large deciduous trees make their stand among the pines. They know how to leaf well enough alone in the fall. And I'm going to get murdered by a bunny again. Yep. Oh, come on. Why does this not work at all? Fine. What? Oh. Magic use. Oh. Is it gonna work ever? Nope. I think he's still missing every time. sure about this. Can I switch it off again? Maybe? No? Ah. Oh. There is absolutely nothing in the little rabbit's fanny pack. Well, maybe a pocket watch, but you don't need one of those. Okay, apparently all rabbits carry pocket watches now. Wasn't aware of that, but sure. <laughs> Does that make me a rabbit? Because I own several pocket watches. Oh, I found the cemetery. The majestic mountains in the background provide a beautiful contrast to the grim gravestones and crypts of the cemetery. I have one fairly old pocket watch, or maybe two. The gravestone is cold to the touch. The epitaph is, of course, engraved. Well, they're not that old. Like, they're not ancient. But they're definitely not new. <laughs> ah. Two spare coffins await their customers here. Apparently, Igor has finally managed to get ahead of business. Like, it's not one of the first pocket watches from way back when or something. Ooh, 
Okay. The bush looks a little strange, almost as though it is sitting rather than growing in its place. Meowing bushes. Seems about right. You hear a giggle from behind the bush, and a squeaky voice asks, one and one make three, tell me what you make of me. Reading, writing, riddling, game, can you tell me what's my name? Ah. You tell the creature that it must be a result. You're pulling guesses out of air. I'm only wet when I wash my hair. Okay. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, I should probably save. It is night time and I don't know how to fight with this combat system. <laughs> so it's not really, uh, well, it's looking like it might end up being a bit difficult. As you enter this part of the forest, as if a cold wind suddenly sprang up from nowhere. Okay, I haven't died yet. Oh! Well... <laughs> nice timing. The wraith has sucked your life force right out of you. <laughs> Should you return here in another life, you'll need to be properly protected and strike quickly. But yes, um... <laughs> you feel a chill go Yes. Yes, I know. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Was awesome timing. But yeah, I think I might actually need a map. This area is bigger than I expected it to be. And it all looks very similar. That's a dead end. Alright, and, um, just so I don't forget to mention it, um, uh, yeah, as I mentioned on previous streams, won't be streaming this Wednesday, but I am planning on streaming this Thursday, so, yes. And another rabbit. Nope, nope, nope. Oh no. That that's bad. Oh. Uh, how about trying to kill that thing? Okay. Oh. It's fighting it automatically now. I still don't know how to switch that system off. Okay. Well, he's looking very proud of himself now. 
score. You find a few gold crowns and a number of copper kopecks. Fancy. I'm hoping the fact that I'm not staying at the end won't be a problem. Because, I mean, I don't know. In previous games, sometimes you had to be at the end at a specific time. I'm hoping he's not going to do a dance recital, but <laughs> who knows. A fountain with sparkling, crystal clear water beckons to you. This area feels cooler than the rest of the forest. Smell the water. the fountain to smell the water. It has no odor, but a sparkling effervescence that tickles your nostrils. There's a fly around here. We do appreciate it. Um. I do have some other games on the list, and I'm open to suggestions, so I can check the list for the, well, other games I've put in the possibly spooky enough category for now. Um, I've got Dark Seed and I have No Mouth and I must scream on the list. So. There's that. Taste the water. You cautiously taste a tiny sip of water. There is something about the flavor of the water that excites and entices <laughs> you. Before you realize it, uh -oh. you find yourself taking a much deeper drink. The water gives you a funny, dizzy sensation. Oh, good. In fact, it feels as if the whole forest is starting to spin around you. Not good at all. Ah, he's dead. <laughs> there is power here, but it has much to learn. It will probably be killed before it can be of use. Still, there is much magic to learn in Mordavia. Perhaps it may yet serve our purposes. Okay. You awaken from the strange dream. Or was it a dream? Feeling very dizzy and disorientated. Fortunately, the sensation passes in a few moments, and you are back to normal. Weird. But yeah, I guess I could see if some other place sells it. I don't know. Or just go for other games. Haven't decided yet. But yes, Phantasmagoria and Harvester are the first two that I'm planning to do this October. Not sure I'll even get to both of them, who knows? Um, I mean, yes, you can post it in chat, but if you want to suggest games, it's probably best to do that on the Discord server. I can uh, post an invite if you want me to. If anyone wants to join the server, really. It's much easier to keep track of stuff like that on a server instead of in chat, so. It's just me, so. I don't have, I don't know, an editor or something keeping track of what people post. Uh, of course. That makes sense. Nope, that was the wrong direction. <laughs> Wait, what? Ah. Uh, are you sure? I still don't know how to switch this off, but... 
I guess that's fine. You find some copper cupix on the no longer undead. So now it's a dead undead. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'll just post like now so I don't forget to do it. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where I am, map-wise. You feel a chill go through you as you enter this part of the forest. Right, this There's is where I got killed last time. So, trying to figure out how to get to the city. I mean, it's going to be locked, but... Would just be nice to know where I am. Oh, I think that's the garden. You have come to a beautiful garden deep within the forest. A stream flows gently in a loop around the central island. Feelings of peace and harmony permeate the area. Well, I'm guessing I'm gonna sleep here. Okay. You feel the sensation of floating freely in a swirling cloud of magic. You are warm and safe, surrounded by the sound of peaceful beauty. You feel as if you are suddenly totally alive. You can remember every happy moment of your past, taste every favorite sensation, hear all the colors of the universe. Hear the colors. This is the true joy of living. Suddenly, you find yourself trapped by darkness. You cannot breathe. The darkness is tearing the warmth, life, and magic from your body. Pain. The agony of lungs without air. The burning cold of a body trapped in ice. The terror of helplessness as death approaches. You float, cold and lifeless. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. <laughs> okay. That was... interesting. You wake in a cold sweat. You remember every detail of the nightmare as though it had really happened to you. Yes, especially the tasting and hearing colors. As you approach the tree, the fruit vanishes. Must be that low calorie kind. <laughs> Great. Can I fetch it? Well, it's still gone, so... I guess this is a reference to the previous... well, the first game? Yeah, I think it was the first one.
Your magical lasso floats towards the tree and plucks a single ripe fruit from its branches. Oh. A mana fruit! Nice! Unusual looking fruit came from the tree in Orana's garden. You sense a tingling sensation from the magical energy stored in it. Okay. It's an interesting fruit. So I'd say if you feel a tingling sensation when touching a fruit, you might want to go see a doctor. Because that does not sound healthy. Yes, it does indeed seem like I'll need a map. How many of the blue flowers are there? <laughs> this map feels huge. Definitely not what I expected. Oh, he's back. This cemetery, this where dead people buried. Igor buried them. Mm -hmm. Meet Igor, you weird stranger. Well spotted. Grave, hole in ground. Put person in when dead. Not when alive. Well. Grave, hole in ground. Grave, hole in... Technically only large one crypt. Crypt of Borgos. Smaller building tomb. Not certain what distinction myself. <laughs> okay. Oh, Igor got key to crypt. Igor keep key to crypt. No disturb crypt. Not nice. A fresh grave has recently been opened here. I mean, it's a Sierra game. I have to try and test this out. I don't make the rules. Can I die by grave? Apparently not. No hurry. They'll put you in one of those in good time. I guess I can try and read stuff. A heavy stone door seals off the Borgov family crypt. A relief carving on the door shows the crest of the House of Borgov. The inscription on this headstone reads, Michael Med bumped his head in another man's bed. Now he's dead. Rest in peace. This headstone reads, Onodere Pasha Sperry spent the night in the cemetery. Something gave him such a fright that now he sleeps here every night. <laughs> Interesting way to die. This gravestone is marked, No effort could Elissa save. She passed into a watery grave. Her body was lost. Only her memory remains. Is she the one who tried to kill me? Here lies Janos, faithful forever to his lost true love, laid beside her empty grave. Well, the game did kind of tell me that the whole, oh, uh, mermaids trying to kill you Here is just unmarried women. Blue? To his lover was untrue. So she knew just what to do. Fixed herself some Barney stew. What? But yeah. 
So I'm guessing it's not her, even though she died in the water. Because they seemed like they were, at the very least, a couple. Here lies the spirit of Barney Blue. To his lover yeah. was untrue. So she knew just what to do. <laughs> Fixed herself some Barney stew. So, according to Sierra, the way to respond to cheating is eat the person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here lies the body of Caddy Nation, who answered a vampire's invitation. Now this cause for lamentation, it was a fatal recreation. Arkin Tenor walked at night. Arkin saw his final sight. Now the question seems to be, what in the world did Tenna see? Yes, good question. Guess we'll never know. Could be. Or maybe a giggling bush. Because that is still a bit unsettling. <laughs> yes. I found the village again, so... Whoever said I needed a map? What do you need a map for? Still you remain. Yep. It is a wonder you have managed to live so long. Especially since I spent the night outside. After hearing that that's something you definitely shouldn't be doing. Maybe I am a vampire, who knows? Who somehow walks around during the day. Yeah, scratch that. This town was quiet until you arrived. I am keeping my eye on you. I'd say it's still quiet. Castle Borgov is north of the town. The last of the Borgov family left this well a years ago. Now it is inhabited by some cousin. The people of the castle do not bother this town. I suggest strongly that you do not bother the people of the castle. Okay. It used to be that the only monsters around here were the occasional wyverns. Now there are many dangerous things in the valley. It is safe only within the town gates. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the vampires live in the castle if they don't live in the monastery. Dr. Cranium is an idiot and a madman. If you are wise, you will stay away from him. Is that a threat? Nikolai is an old man and easily confused. His missing. Wife has been missing for years. Okay. Now. He cannot face the fact that she is gone. So they 
didn't find her body, but they're assuming she's dead. But we don't know what killed her. sit down no don't sit there you'll never know when an elephant will wander in what there's nothing you need on the table i'm trying to sit nothing you sit it doesn't burn sit <laughs> supposed to get food I can't sit down there finally it's a typical country breakfast fried beets and sausage with garlic, garlic for the garden <laughs> they do like the garlic around here I mean fair enough if they love around vampires that didn't do it so can I eat it that did what where am I going now the table's helping to keep you off the floor. What? The table is helping to keep you off the floor? What? Uh, no, I have not. Have you? That. That didn't. Do I just. It doesn't. The... Mm. How am I going to eat the it food? Doesn't... It's an anti-gravity machine. What? Well, maybe not exactly, but it does keep food and drinks from falling to the floor. You're in the ho- You're in- I guess maybe I've already eaten it? So I don't know. But yeah, I guess they are doing that. Good point. Bam. Pretty sure garlic ice cream exists, considering all the different weird types of ice cream that exist. Yeah. Can I enter the kitchen at all? No. Just walking upstairs. Fine. There is no response. Whoever or whatever is renting this room must not be there right now. Or it's asleep. The room is totally. You unlock the door to your room and go in. Oh, it's nice. I like the decor. <laughs> it's interesting. The chest is empty. I open the window. The townspeople have a poor opinion of people whom they see climbing out of windows and over roofs. I just wanted to open the window. Oh, come on. Trying to be a rugged individualist, are you? <sighs> you light the candle. You put the candle out. Such gameplay. You light the lamp. You put out the lamp. That didn't do it. Garlic braids festoon the room, adding that certain special ambiance of Gilroy in the spring to the room. This place and their garlic. Light this lamp too. Your chandelier swinging days are over. Oh, come on. It was fun while it lasted. It 
That didn't... So... Besides the ones that come in here in the evening, there are quite a few others. You probably have met the shopkeeper, the gr- I do not- Fine. Guess he doesn't have anything new to say. That didn't do any- I guess I'll have to try and get this thing at night. <laughs> well, I mean, fair enough, it's quite the change, but I think I would have been glad. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fancy, though. I'm guessing it's not your first language. It doesn't budge. I've definitely learned quite a bit of stuff through games, but... Not English, specifically. I learned that through... Reading, watching media, school, well, that stuff. But it does seem like plenty of people learned English through gaming, which is kind of neat. Yeah, still can't do anything with the pumpkins. You take an ear of the corn and put it away in your pack. Okay. You have enough corn for. But I want more corn. You have enough corn for now. Fine. And you can't really listen to Manu, considering he doesn't have voice acting. I wish I could have learned English through actually watching TV. Because in my case, uh, <laughs> well, I got the super high quality dubbed versions of everything. So that was definitely a reason for me to want to learn English and to not watch TV. <laughs> Yes, yes, I did. Among other things. But yeah, I don't think there's gonna be a compass in this game. Just walking in one direction, seeing if it's gonna lead anywhere. Apparently it ends at the swamp. Okay. So if I got that right, if I walk straight up from the swamp, I get to the village.
Why would you watch Swedish DuckTales? <laughs> Seems a bit silly. Like, did you specifically go to Sweden just to watch DuckTales? Okay, can't do anything, because it's still doing the auto-attack stuff. Well, that was quick. Alright. I'll take it. There is absolute... Well, I mean, it just seems weird that those bunnies keep on attacking me. I mean, one murderous bunny, sure, two, fine, but at this point it's quite a few of them. Anyways, I've got an exam to study for. I've played, um, King's Quest 1 through 7, I think? So, you can check the About section on my channel. But anyways, as I was saying, I have a physics exam to study for. So, I'll go do that. I'm sure that's gonna go perfectly fine. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, it does seem like the murder bunnies might be reproducing. But who knows. And fair enough. Welcome to Twitch. So, yeah. Yeah, I know I have exams. <laughs> Uh, how dare uni get in the way of my streaming career? <laughs> but yes, I, as I said, um, I'll be streaming on Thursday instead of Wednesday this week. So keep that in mind. So yes, wish me luck. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, sorry. <laughs> I can't really not take my exam. And, well, I can't change the fact that it's going to interfere with my stream time at the very least. So, I could stream later in the day, but I prefer to not do that. So. Yes. Anyways, that's why I'm planning on doing it this way. What? Yes. What do you mean? As in, if I stream later on Wednesday, it, it would make it a lot more stressful for me. So, yes. Either way, it's gonna be on Thursday, not Wednesday. If you can't manage to watch the stream on Thursdays, then I'm sorry, you can watch the VOD. No, I'm not gonna do both, because I have other exams to study for after that exam. <laughs> so, yes. It's been fun though. No, I'm not gonna do a study stream. It wouldn't be very interesting. Trust me. And I would be looking at old exam papers, which 
yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about the legality of showing those publicly on stream. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that at all. So, yeah. <laughs> and no, you can watch them for free. <laughs> yes, I did a study stream where I was designing stuff and a, a, a technical drawing software. It wasn't a normal study stream. It wasn't me doing, well, actual exam study sessions. So, it's not quite the same thing. And my point is, actual exam study sessions, I don't think streaming those would uh, work out well. So, doesn't mean I'll never ever do another stream where it's just me learning stuff, but I don't think I'll do exam study streams. Anyways. No, I'm not going to stream during the exam either. <laughs> that would be highly, uh, well, maybe not illegal as an against the law, but against the rules. <laughs> so that is not going to happen <laughs> ever. Anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on Thursday. <laughs> Bye.